Welcome to another episode of Your Support Group Podcast, home of the number one podcast to support you at what you like to do. It's 2024. And if you don't know who we are, well, you probably should have been watching us back in 2023. I I would say that you should be watching us all the time. Not some of the time, but hey, what do I know? You know, what's going on, Q? Neither, neither, just living the good life. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. Yeah. Oh, man. So what what's going on? I know, man. It's been a lot going on. I mean, Cat <laughs> Williams is setting the world on fire right now. Uh, basically grabbed every comedian by the ears and snatched them down from off of their pedestal. Um, don't know if he said what he said was 100% true, but... I mean, I, I mean, some stuff was subjective. Like, saying somebody's not funny... It just depends because I find a lot of people that he said wasn't funny. I, I, I've i enjoyed their comedy. And regardless yeah. of whether somebody writes their own stuff or not, you know, uh, I heard a lot of people do that. I heard a lot of comedians collaborate with other writers to help. Was this Paul Mooney used to write a lot of jokes for other comedians? You know what I mean? So that's not nothing unusual. But it was entertaining because he like literally had me the whole two hours and 40 something minutes and I was like wanting more, <laughs> but it was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it was captivating. It was definitely captivating. Um, and he said some very motivational stuff in between there. I yeah. don't think the narrative where, you know, a lot of people are coming out and saying, oh, like Kevin Hart was like, you got to get that anger up out of you, bruh. I didn't find him angry. I didn't either. I found him on point, you know. Uh, I've never with some found of the stuff him angry. Saying. I've yeah. never found him angry. You know, I've never like, found him bitter. I've never found him like a little petty. You know, we all get petty every once in a while, <laughs> but never the things that they. And then all the times they were like, "Oh, he's a drug addict." I've never really saw that either. So I was glad he clarified that part. I just think that if you listen to some of the stuff that he said <laughs> about like Kevin Hart and others, it kind of made sense. Like, you know, you never heard of Kevin Hart before Soul Plane, and then all of a sudden he just blows up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally you get a little wave of a stand-up comedian. You see him go and do this and do that. But when he said that, I was like, oh, wow. I I didn't even think about it like that. You know what I'm saying? So he, he said some truths. He said Kevin came out with his own deals already. So, I mean, he was already on as soon as he hit the ground in L.A. Yeah. So, I mean, some of the stuff that he said was true. You know, um, Bernie was the funniest out of everybody. Yes. Yes. And if you ever really listen to Bernie, like later on, Bernie really didn't cuss. He might have said some of them, but he, right. he kind of curved some of his cuss words. Yeah. And his show, the one he had was by far like one of the best. Like he, he was hilarious. He was, he was, he was, he was the, the the stuff. He was the stuff. And I was glad he gave Bernie his flowers like that because it was like, yeah, Bernie was the man. Like, you can say what you want. I mean, it was, it was a few that he did not touch upon. You know, um, Chappelle didn't mm -hmm. say nothing about rock. Um, I mean, it was a few. He didn't say nothing about Monique. None of them. You know, he gave... He even gave Mark Curry some flowers, you know what I'm saying? So, yep. I mean, he 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 was targeting specific people in that conversation, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I don't I don't know what happened or transpired to make him, you know, go after them people, but I he woke up and chose violence. <laughs> and after he said that, I saying. couldn't unsee it. I couldn't unsee it. <laughs> And then he was like, he was wearing the man piece. Like we all knew 
You know, we used to make jokes back in the hood, back when I used to cut hair and stuff. Well, I still kind of cut hair. But back when I used to shape people up, they'd be like, man, give me that Steve Harvey. We kind of knew <laughs> something wasn't right about his hair anyway. And then later on, I found out that he had a man piece. This was before uh, Cat said it. So when he said it, it made sense. But when he started talking about country bunkin, Mr. Potato Head or Weeble Wobble, I was like, oh, man. Like, dude, like, why did you do that, man, like that? That was filthy. <laughs> and then you said was... all the light-skinned, ugly girlfriends and wives, you get you get an ugly wife, an ugly light-skinned Wait, wife. Wait, he didn't call them ugly. He didn't call them ugly. He said... Weird face. Funny looking. Okay, funny face. Yeah. My bad. He didn't call him ugly. Why do you got to be weird face? <laughs> oh, my God. He ain't he right. He, was, he, he said, he said, uh, what did he say? He said, my wife motivated me. He said, you said that about the first wife and the wife before that. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. He got it yeah. in for this guy. Yeah. He it, got it in for And him. it's so sad because, like, I remember when Steve Harvey first surfaced with the bald head, he said the reason why he cut his hair is because his wife told him that he was going to be too busy with doing all his shows, so he might as well go ahead on and cut off all his hair. It's like, you knew from the jump that, why you got to lie, Steve? Why you lie, Unc? Just tell the truth that you was already bald. Ain't nothing wrong with a bald head. Bald head sexy. <laughs> Shit. Just take it out. There you go. Look, we got a bald head sexy dude right there. <laughs> Even though I got to shave because my, my five o'clock shadow is showing. But, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, he, he like I said, he made some valid points, you know. He 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 brought up every topic, and it it was like almost like he just sat there and watched every episode that they was on Club Shay Shay. <laughs> <laughs> when when all of them were on Club Shay Shay, they came by, did their interviews. He was like he was watching. He was like, oh no, that is lying. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Oh, oh, oh okay, that is not pimping my. If they would have just left him alone, like. A lot of times, it's like that, that saying, the only way you come for me is if I send for you. But if I'm just chilling, gotcha. being quiet, don't don't put my name, keep my name out your, your mother trucking mouth. Yeah, that man said it. He, he said it in so many words, you know. But, I mean, he, I, I, Cat is genuinely funny. And yeah, if he if he he's like a he's like a dog with a sit, and once he got a hold of that sit, he was like, "Oh, I smell some bull." <laughs> <laughs> it was just like on it. Um, yeah, shout out, shout out to cousin cat. You know, not, not everybody want to come out <laughs> trying to pick apart everything he said. It's like we know. Like, you have to listen to stuff and be able to see what the truth is and what things are subjective and what things are slightly embellished. Of you course, know, we know everything wasn't 100%, but no, from his perspective, maybe. And how do you know it wasn't all... I mean, I'm not saying everything is true. Like I said, some things are subjective. I Some people he said wasn't funny, I find funny. Right. Like he, like he said the whole, when he said the whole Kevin Hart part, right? He, uh, mm -hmm. it kind of sound like he was a little bit off kilter with it a little bit, mm -hmm. but you know, I even had to break it down to my wife. I was like, no, this is what he's saying. He's saying that Kevin Hart, you didn't, you didn't hear Kevin Hart about being on tour or anything like that before he came out to Hollywood. He was like, it was almost like he was already on as soon as it came out. Like, like he did like some stand-ups out there on the East Coast, 
you know, right. what Cat said. He did a bunch of stuff on the East Coast. He never did nothing on the West Coast. So all of a sudden you come out to L.A. and you just like on automatically. And then you got this lead role in this movie, Soul Plane. Like you already, How does that you already had your deals. You already right. had your deals. So you got to, you, you know, you, you make. And, and a lot of people don't listen intelligently. That's the scary part. So they taking this at face value. And you know uh-huh. what you got to do because cat speak cat bonics. <laughs> <laughs> and believe, and a lot of people don't believe, but cat is really, truly, extremely smart. He speak yeah. cat bonics. So he speak at a level to where you're supposed to already be on it to get it. And so mm-hmm. that's what he was saying. So it, it's a bunch of stuff that was in that two hours and some change. Yes. Yeah. I, look. If, if you if you did not watch it the whole two hours, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he definitely entertained from A to Z. Yeah, and he came out Put the... Put in a dress. He came out the gate swinging. Just boof, boof. Say, what well, damn, this is what we about to do? Okay, let me sit back and buckle up. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think the man got do, done doing the intro. And he was like, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me tell you. <laughs> Such an entertainer ain't funny. Like, wow. <laughs> Man, five minutes to finish intro with you. Oh, boy. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I, you know, as, as a fellow person who studies the arts and things like that, I, I find, I find funny with everybody. Just everybody ain't that funny, like on the yeah. level of because I, I grew up watching old school comedians. I grew up watching, you know, the Richard Pryors and different things right. like that, the Eddie Murphys and and the ones that, you know, um just uh just just did it hard, you know what I'm saying? And right. and now with everything being so uh how you say PC or everybody's in their feelings about things that you say. You know, it's it's different. It's it's not the same as it was back back then. You know, you could lose endorsement deals and different things. Like back then, we talk about your mama, we talk about you on crack, we talk about your sex, your sexual preference, we talk about everything. And now right. it's like can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you have to find a way to but just like Kat said, you have to in those times you did those jokes, but in these times you have to find a creative way to say the same thing that you used to say. You know, if you know you can't say the R word, you know there's another word that you can say that is not offensive to a group of people. Right. True. You know, and even sure. even nowadays, even if you try to to doctor the joke down, and people still gonna find a way because they always try. It's like, first of all, we come here to laugh. If you don't want to laugh, why is you here? Because I come Take to a comedy show to laugh. Baby behind home. Yep, <laughs> definitely. Talk about me. Talk about what I got on. I'm gonna laugh with you. Might even throw a joke back at you. Right. <laughs> Cause I went to just recently we went to go see Joe Coy, one of the funniest comedians. Like I love Joe Coy. And like his last five minutes of his set, there was a kid up front with his mom. And his mom obviously she looked really good. Cause Joe Coy went in. <laughs> and we, had, we know this kid's name. I bet you he's traumatized because he kept talking about Jacob. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Your mom's hot. Do you remember coming out your mom's Jacob? Jacob, you better clean your effing room, Jacob. I was like, damn. And he had us out. My stomach hurt so bad. He talked about this kid and his mom. Because you're up front. He can see you. You're right there. And everybody used to know, right. if you go to like a Joe Torrey or D.L. Hughley, why are you sitting up front? He, they about to get yeah. you. Yeah, you <laughs> they can't. About to get you. I was just about to say, like, you can't sit up front of, of a Joe Torrey or D.L. Hughley set. Like, no. Like, they, they coming. They coming. You, you better have everything on point. You better look like Gregory <laughs> Hines 
and 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 your wife better look like Halle Berry because even then they right. might still come. Like, oh, you fine, fine. Let me talk to you for a minute. Don't worry about right. him. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Because they coming. You know, and that's yeah. that's the type of comedy that I grew up with. You know, what I'm saying they wasn't afraid to talk about a subject or a topic. And nowadays, that seems to be nothing. Yeah. Way. I mean, you can you can <laughs> still work it. You can still work the room, but you won't get. You know, you can still work the room, still do your set like you normally would, but you won't get to that next level. You get what I'm saying? Like, like they're gonna cap you. They're gonna they're gonna yeah. say, "Oh, remember back in 2023 when you said this, and you remember back in 2021 when you said that, and next thing you know, you're not hosting an award show or something right. else, and they 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 messing up your endorsement deals and different things like yeah. that." So. It's a it's a crazy world, you know, with comedy. You it know, is. That's why, I, that's why I kind of threw my hands up with it. I still love it, but because <laughs> <laughs> I know me, I've been on, got into the set, got real hot with the set, having fun. And that's the I know I've been on saying something, and they like, hey, excuse me, Mister Williams. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're being sued for uh, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely not something that you want to hear. Um, but since we in a new year, and we're we're just having so much fun with this. Um, <laughs> another thing that's fun is resolutions, and it's a lot of people out here that make resolutions every year, um, and they try to stick to them. They beat themselves down with them. Uh, they feel depressed about it. And it's not really that serious. Like it's, it's something that you made a bet with yourself, basically, and you just happen to lose the bet. But <laughs> I, that's the best way I can simplify it, right? Um, it must be coming down there. You can hear it? Is it raining hard? Well, yeah, it's just like we're being relentless right now. Yeah, because the it's mic hard. is picking it up. Really? So, yeah. So for everybody that's listening right now, don't worry. It's not a whole bunch of white noise that's in the background of the show. It is literally rain in Florida right now. Yes. And the Tampa Bay area is coming down. It's coming down. And about the next 10 minutes, the sun going to come out like, oh, y'all like been waiting on me? Yeah. Oh, y'all, it, it, y'all been waiting on me all day? I've mm-hmm. learned never to leave my windows down in my car. <laughs> Just don't it, do it. It might be a don't hurricane or, 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 or one of them daggone birds in there or whatever. And you can't beat up the birds down there in Florida because you're going to jail. Yeah. But yeah. They're protected. I mean, everybody, everybody wants to have a New Year's resolution. I know my New Year's resolution is, you know, uh, be a better steward over the things that I attach myself to, like including this podcast, uh, work, um, just all business aspects, all family aspects, everything like that is just being a better steward up over it and managing my time better because I know I can get really? deep in the weeds with time. I'm, I am horrible with time. <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I am horrible with time. And, you know, that's that's something that I'm working on this year for myself. You know, that's my New Year's resolution, you know. What about you, SQ? I don't really do resolutions. I, uh, I do four words. Every year it comes across my Facebook and it's like four words. The first four words you see will be things that you will work on for this year. And so I have my four words and then I just focus on those four words and I just see what the universe tries to tell me. So I have create creative, no creation, which is, I had that last year. So something must really want me to continue to be creative. I have create self care. That must mean I need to work on spending more time with me being more cognizant of the time that I, I show myself love. Um, but what's the other two? And two other words. I can't remember them off the top, but I wrote them down just so I can um, 
stay focused on those words and just try to to implement them in areas of my life. And that's how I go from there. Because, you know, fitness, everybody does that as a, but I'm in that 365. You know, I got my Zumba wear on right now. I'm about to go hit the gym as soon as I get off this. <laughs> that's, you see my hands like, come on, come on, give me something else. Give me something else. Come on, come on. Like, I can't, like, can't work on that. But, like, listen, um, what is, I, since I've known you, you've been yeah. into fitness. You've been into Zumba. Yeah. So it's not. Come on, yeah. like, like you was like in muscle pitches and stuff. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm just going to continue on that path. You know, I'm, I'm about to, I was like, in a couple more years, this year I'll be 49, next year I'll be 50. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of party I'm going to do for this big 5-0. So mark your calendar. I might have to take a trip. trip you got to make yeah. the trip down. <laughs> yeah, might have to might have to bring my suntan lotion because you know in North Carolina, you know we get sun, then it snows, then the sleet rain, then the sun yeah. come back out. That's why I got a hoodie and, and a pair of shorts on right now because I, I just don't. Yeah, know. I don't know. I don't miss North Carolina weather. It'd be so bipolar. <laughs> It'd be so bipolar. <laughs> just crazy. yeah, but what I what I want people to understand though too is it don't. Like Q said, you know, she focuses on just those, what, four, three, four words. Mm-hmm. And and go and goes with that. Um, so it don't have to be something like everybody else do, like you write it down on a piece of paper, you throw it in the creek, and you put a dime behind it. Like it don't have to be some whacked out stuff like that. You do it your way. And if your way is to throw it in the creek and put a dime behind it, then that's on you, you know. But you you do your resolutions your way. Maybe they're small. Maybe they're small things or fine tuning like myself. You know, my 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 fine tuning is being the better steward of over the things that I manage and time. Um maybe it's those small things like that, you know, but it don't have to be nothing extravagant like, oh, I wanna lose a hundred pounds by December. You could do it, but you're gonna make yourself miserable. You're not gonna have fun doing it. And then that's gonna probably cause you to gain more weight than lose weight. Yeah. You know, don't make yourself miserable by setting, you know, some some far out goals or anything like that that's going to stress you out. Like, just set small goals. Those small goals, those small goals are called steps. And as you make mm-hmm. those steps, guess what? You get to the top of the steps and you look back and you say, by golly, I made it all the way here. <laughs> yep. Yep. But I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to get... Uh, caught up in the wind with, you know, making those 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 what I like to call truly it's truly not unattainable, but I like to call them unattainable goals because you stress yourself out more and mess up something on the other end trying to stick within that lane, and yeah. that's not fair to yourself or whatever you're trying to do. You see, because yeah. you you're, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. So. I always say be smart about it. And that that's an acronym that we've gone over since I've t- sold Aflac. I used to sell Aflac. Since I've started this job that I work now, it's always about smart goals. Be specific. Don't tell me, oh, I want to be a millionaire. Okay. A lot of us do. But what steps are you going to take to become a millionaire? Right. Because becoming right. a a millionaire just doesn't become a millionaire overnight. Not everybody, unless you got a millionaire uncle, grandpa, who just going to leave the money behind, you know. Unless your last name is Brewster and your uncle leave you some right. millions. <laughs> so the rest of them people, I'm pretty sure Mark Zuckerberg will tell you he what he had to do to get to where he, he's at or even a Cat Williams or a Steve Harvey or whoever else got some some dollars behind their name, Oprah Winfrey. They, they didn't just wake up with their they coins. They had to take some steps to get there. But yep. yeah, smart. Yep. It's called kiss. Specific. It's called Keep kiss. Keep it simple. Yep. Keep it simple, stupid. 
I, I was gonna leave the last part off. <laughs> but yeah, keep it simple and then celebrate your successes along the way. Like yeah. we're doing this uh challenge and one lady just reported to me she lost five pounds already. That's awesome. Shout out to the lady that lost five pounds. Let's make some noise for her. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like I tell people all the time, it's not about trying to kill yourself. It's about consistency. If mm. you keep doing the same thing every day, you are eventually going to achieve the result that you're looking for, especially when it comes to fitness. Like if I say I'm going to cut out sugar, I'm going to drink more water, and I'm just going to make an effort to do at least 30 minutes of workout a day. You don't have to be in the gym all day. You can go mm -hmm. to the gym for 30 minutes, get a good work in Go home, eat the right stuff, get you a nice sleep, make sure you drink your water, and you're good. Unless you have some type of thyroidism and all those. But, you know, that's going yeah, to a different yeah. world. You just have a small top and, and a big booty. That's all. <laughs> you'd, be like, you'd be like, well, let me go ahead and get on up. And then it'd be like, you know. But, hey, right. you know, all jokes aside, um... Like you said, it, it's just, you know, getting those small things in, like eating better, um, you know, getting the proper rest, not stressing. Because stress can do one of two things, either make you gain weight or lose weight. Well, it can also kill you, but <laughs> it can make you gain weight or lose weight. Um, and, I mean, people just, just set them small goals. Yep. Yeah. Stick to it. And even if you fall off, guess what? If you fall down, guess what you can do? Get back up. Oh, it's just like a stage. Look, it's just like a stage play. As long as you don't tell nobody, nobody else knows the script. Thank you. A resolution is just for you. That's right. it. It ain't something that you go broadcasting to. I'm not going to go put Kenny, do better with time on Facebook so everybody can make jokes and stuff like that when I show up late to events. Right. <laughs> I thought you said your New Year's resolution was time. Right. Right. Oh, you know, I'm holding myself accountable. You know, it's about self-accountability and that's the way I look at it. I'm not about to be out here just putting on gold chains with, with clocks on them and stuff like that. No. 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 So, keep your keep your stuff to yourself and set those goals for yourself and make them small and simple and sweet so you can mm, just eat them up just eat them up yep yeah yep, yep. so it. first episode of 2024 <laughs> yeah we back in the building and if you haven't had the opportunity to go check out anything else that we have done in the past since 2020 yeah, 2021 in the 2021 yeah so you can go all the way back by going to our website www.ysgpodcast.com and i guarantee it's a topic or a subject that you want to know about or you would like to talk about so we have an email address or where you can click for more information to send those topics in and Maybe, hey, maybe you could be a guest on the show. Send that in. I would love to talk to you. Q would love to talk to you. We would love to talk to you. And yes, that's what we do. And if nobody told you in 2024 that they love you, guess what? We do. Yes. <laughs> With your stinking breath and all, we still love you. So that's it. Peace. Yes, 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 yes,